Hey you guys, what's going on? Now today we've got a very special build to go over. I know a lot of people are looking for more survivability in apocalypse mode, and I have perfected that build. With this build, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be able to withstand multiple blows from any boss with maximum damage reduction in the game. And not only that, you'll have near infinite healing relics as well. That's right, you're never going to run out. And it doesn't even stop there. It's not good enough to just be unkillable. You also have to finish the boss off at some point. And I found the combination weapons that'll kill these bosses as quickly as you can. This build really does it all. Now let's dive into this build and see what we're working with here. For the class, we've got Medic and Summoner. Now the Medic class is going to give us access to the Prime Perk, which refunds us a Relic Charge whenever we heal our allies for 250 or more health. And that's where the Summoner class comes into play. With two summons out, you'll heal yourself with your Relic. Your summons will also be healed. And boom, your Relic Charge will come back right away. I ran through this in Adventure Mode and never dropped below 8 hearts in any dungeon or fight. And if I'm going to be honest, I only died maybe twice in the whole thing. Now let's get into this armor set. We're rocking the heaviest armor in the game. The Leto Mark II set. With the Labyrinth Gloves for extra armor padding. But don't worry, we're not going to be flopping around in the boss fights, oh no. Because in this game, there are two ways to get around a maximum roll. But we'll get into that in just a minute. Because first we have to talk about a healing relic that works with this build. And that is the Crystal Heart. This unique relic heals us for 100% of our health and our summons over 10 seconds. The drawback being that our movement speed is reduced for the same amount of time. But what this relic ensures is that we're getting a constant heal over time. For the relic shards, we're slotting survivability with extra armor, extra health, and damage reduction. For the main weapon, I tried out a bunch of different things. The bows, nightfall, and I settled on the Bonesaw LMG, and here's why. We're not going to have our normal support jewelry to make these weapons shine. But the bone saw can handle itself on its own quite well, actually. I slotted this guy with corrosive rounds and twisted wounds to get two status effects going at once. But you could run hotshot or overflow if you prefer. The melee weapon is up to you, but I liked the special blade for this build. And lastly, we have the MP60 with the hotshot and bandage for the third status effect. Or run out, run out of LMG ammo. Now let me run through the amulet rings real quick and I'll show you why we made these choices. First off, we have Nimue's Ribbon, which is going to give us even more heals with the Crystal Heart. But more importantly, give this slow build some much needed haste. Now if you don't know what haste means, everything you do is faster while it's active. Reloading, climbing, using consumable, literally everything. For the first ring, I've got the Bright Steel Ring. While you can face tank a lot of damage with this build, I like to have the option to have a light roll to get out of the way. You'll do much better if you have this as an out. Now if you don't like this idea, you can also run the Ring of Omens with one of the Geisha amulets. This will turn your dodge roll into a Misty Step, much like the Bloodhound Step in Elden Ring. Our next two rings are all about Bulwark, which increases our damage negation while they're active. The Blessed Ring will give us two stacks whenever we use our Healing Relic, and the Soul Guard Ring does the same whenever we have two summons out. And with all this together, we actually get 83% damage reduction. And if you don't know, 80% is the cap in this game. It doesn't matter if you're at 90%, 100%, 200%, it caps off at 80. Lastly, we have the Stone of Malevolence, so we can chain together our elemental mods. Theron Sigil is another good choice if you don't have that one. Alright, now let me show you the numbers. And there we go, 83% total DR. We got a little bit over, but not by a lot. For the traits, we've got Triage and Regrowth by default, which with this class is honestly both pretty great for what we're doing here. After that, I have points in Fortify, so we can get as close to that 80% DR cap as we can. I like to put points to ammo reserves as enemies on this difficulty can take a beating and I don't want to run out of ammo. Vigor and Endurance for max health and stamina. Spirit for mod power, you don't really need skill cooldowns with a class like this. 
And lastly, we have Glutton maxed out for quicker relic uses and Siphoner for lifesteal to keep that health bar nice and healthy. Alright, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you're looking for max survivability, this is the class for you. If you're on your Apocalypse playthrough and proving to be a little bit of a struggle, this is definitely the easy mode button. And hey, if you're new around here, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the next build video. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.